Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Myers. I'm the Director of Business Development here at the Lake Superior Community Partnership. Um, I want to thank you for attending our webinar today, Economic Development 411. It's always great to see people interested in economic development and talk a little bit about what we do here at the LSCP. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those in the question pane and I'll get to them at the end. And I do apologize, it's allergy season, so you might hear me um, drinking some water or clearing my throat throughout this, so I apologize in advance. So to get started, um, what truly is the definition of economic development? It is improving the economic development or economic well-being of a community through efforts in job creation, job retention, tax base enhancement, and quality of life. In the end, what it really is all about is generating wealth in the community. So this graph gives a good overview of where we fit with wealth creation and how it works in a community. At the top, you'll see the wealth creators. Um, these are those who create direct jobs into the area and provide investment, capital, et cetera. The economic development organizations like the LSCP um, or InvestUP work with those wealth creators to attract the business. They help them start up, they retain them, which in the end brings money into the community. Then going through the funnel, you'll see the circulation of that money. Things like other organizations are created to help circulate local spending in the community. Uh, one item we don't really help with in the funnel is the exportation of money. This really happens with companies like your big box stores like Target and Walmart. While they provide jobs and investment in the area, they export majority of their wealth back to where their headquarters are at, which is not here. Um, typically, these are more organic and formula based. They're based on specific marketing strategies, and we usually don't really have any say in attracting one to the area. They do all of their research internally. So this graph shows a really quick snapshot of how wealth creation works. It starts at the top with the full-time jobs and benefits, which is always important to the community. And then it moves to increase household buying and income, which is when people are out in the community spending money, you're buying more cars, going out to dinner. And then that attracts more retailers and other business owners because they can see that there's a market in the area. It then goes into generating sales tax revenue which goes to our local municipalities who provide us with our local amenities that we expect them to provide, such as our police, fire, parks, our trails. And then that shows that we have a quality place to live and leads to more attraction to companies. And then the cycle just starts all over again. There are different types of economic development. Uh, one is business retention and expansion. This is really where the LSCP focus focuses majority of their time on, which as you should in economic development, because 80% of growth in a community comes from within. It's always easier to get a company to stay and expand than it is to get a new company to come to the area. Startups, uh, 10 to 20% of our, your attention. And then attraction is the most expensive and competitive part, and you should spend about five to 10% of your time there. So BRE, business retention and expansion, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about it. And again, this is where majority of local economic developers spend their time. So just as you would expect, BRE is just what it says it is. It's to maintain and grow existing businesses and jobs um, in Marquette County. This is where we help businesses overcome challenges. We help them grow, take advantage of op opportunities. Uh, as many business owners know, it's harder to try and find new customers than it is to retain the ones you have. It's the same with the businesses in the community. So I touched on some of these, but again, 80% of growth comes from within your community. Attraction is very expensive and competitive. If you're not doing business retention and expansion, then retaining and retaining companies, attraction will never work because new businesses 
look at what's already in your area um, and how they're expanding. Uh, they're kind of, they work hand in hand. So if um connects local businesses and it also, if you haven't received, if you have recent wins um, and bring in local companies, it helps keep them engaged and in the community. So when we look more anecdotally ways to measure, we use testimonials. Um, oh, I jumped ahead of the slide. We use testimonials, positive feedback. We look to our ambassadors of our region to help share their success stories. We also look to referrals that we get through clients we've worked with. Um, some other things that we do is it's a metrics and data world out there that we live in. So some that we look at are job creation, uh, jobs that are retained. If there's a business that we're helping that is potentially looking to shut down, that kind of stuff. So entrepreneurship. This is another part of economic development, which is your startup businesses, which is about 10 to 20% of the services that we provide. Um, it's really turning an idea or a dream into a profitable, profitable business. Services needed here are typically capital, training, technical assistance, network and marketing. Um, these are all items that we're able to help startups with. We can help them file their paperwork with the state to get their sales ID, sales tax ID, get their LLC paperwork filed, um, help them make connections through our network, et cetera. And just a reminder, again, if you have any questions throughout this, just to submit those through the question box and I'll get to them. Attraction, um, business attraction, the one that will always hit the front page of the news. Um, it's bringing in new companies to the area. This is also the hardest and most expensive part of economic development. Um, and the definition is the process of inventorying the community and translating the findings into a plan to attract companies that will diversify and build the local and regional economy. So when you talk about attraction, you have to talk about it as a marathon, not a sprint. Um, it has a low return on investment. You need to talk to your community to manage the expectations. Sometimes these projects can take years to complete. And most of the time you have, you may not make it past the first round as you're competing with thousands of other locations around the country. So business attraction, a lot of what we do are under these three categories. Um, lead development, which is what I just described, um, or which I would, which is with site selectors. So site selectors are companies who are the middleman. They work for a larger business who's trying to locate their business somewhere in in the world, and the site selector will send out a RFP or request for proposal and people answer those with sites or buildings that are available that meet those needs. And then the site selector looks through all of those and selects top, stop, selects top areas for the business to look at. Um, we also use a site selector database, which breaks down site selectors by the categories and sectors that they work in. So we have a particular space available right now. Um, then we know who to target from that list. So um, there are site selector events where it's like speed dating. You will be given a time to speak with a site selector where you can sit down with and tell them about your community and what it has to offer. Uh, the uphill battle with that we continue to have is people really know Michigan, but they don't think of the UP. They think of Detroit and Grand Rapids or Flint when you talk of Michigan. So it's really trying to break down their perceptions of what the Upper Peninsula is and what it offers. 
marketing and public relations. We do a variety of different things with the media, such as press releases. We also do quarterly e-blasts to site selectors to keep them up to date with what's going on in our community and available buildings and new incentives that we have. Project development, we do work with the state with the RFPs, um, which I mentioned. Uh, so site searches, if someone calls us looking for a specific square footage or acreage of land, we do have um, that all readily available with the help of our Zoom Prospector database, which I'll get into a little bit more detail later. We do package our proposals when we respond to RFPs and we collaborate with our business community um, so that they know what is available here. Um, it's really all about connections and working together when it comes to business attraction. <clears throat> so this is just an example of the site selector database that I talked about where we can focus on specific site selectors in certain industries. So for instance, if we were working on a project for energy, we could use this tool to pull site selectors that focus in that industry. We do a newsletter to our site selectors. Um, this is an example of one that we've done. Um, they may include when a pro uh, property becomes available or even when we have bad news um, happen that potentially is good news. So if a business closed, we could use that to show that there's available workforce in the area. This is an example of a proposal that we put together for an RFP. Uh, we include information on the area where the property is, such as demographic info, tax info, incentives, um, et cetera. Zoom Prospector, this is our database that we use to showcase all properties that are for sale or for lease in the UP. Um, this tool automatically uploads properties from the MLS database and then all that are for sale by or lease by owner, I manually put in. We want this to be as up-to-date as possible because site selectors don't call us right off the bat. They typically will check out an economic developer's website first to see what's available. Um, the tool can also be used as a data source if you're looking for demographic info, occupational data, and there's so much more, but this is a free tool on our website. So I encourage everybody to go check it out. So this slide shows what we did at the LSCP um, last year. Like every other business in the country, um, you know, we you're, we're seeing a lot of startup activity. Uh, we saw more, about the same that we saw in 2021, but 76% of our time was spent on retention and expansion of existing businesses. 23% was spent on startups. And then the remaining was spent on attraction or prospects. So public policy um, really does have an impact on economic development because it has an impact on business. And so one thing that we do is we make sure we are the eyes and ears for the region. Um, more larger company, most larger companies have someone who can do this for them, but smaller companies don't have the capacity to do that. So we do that for them. Um, we track proposed legislation and educate our partners on what's going on. We also will communicate our position on issues to legislators and department heads as they come up because taking a stand on, on an issue doesn't do anything unless we voice and advocate for it. So a few ways that we do that is through the Marquette County Ambassadors. They're an organization under the LSCP umbrella. They're a group of about 30 leaders across the county who work on community and regional legislative issues. They focus on topics around education, infrastructure, et cetera. They put talking points together to use when they make their two trips to Lansing to advocate on behalf of the UP. Um, to legislators and department heads. Their last trip was in April and we had about 20 meetings over the course of two days while we were down there. 
We also belong to the Northern Michigan Chamber Alliance, which consists of multiple organizations. I like to say knuckles up from the state. And this helps us elevate our voice. Uh, you know, the UP is only 3% of the population. So working with like-minded individuals in Northern Michigan, it makes our voice that much stronger. Um, the group actually represents about 7,000 businesses through Northern Michigan and Marquette County. We also have a government relations task force that's hybrid with the ambassador group. Um, this group looks at issues and brings recommendations to the LSCP board on items we should support or oppose. So here is a list of the policy issues that we worked on last year, and it shows how we track policy issues. We will follow it all the way until the end to see if it passes, fails, or if the bill dies, for instance, in lame duck. Um, you may also see letters of support that we worked on in here, but one thing that I'll mention is that we do not endorse candidates. That's not something that um, our organization will do. So talent is one of the top issues with businesses we meet with. Um, to nobody's surprise, it's still an issue. A few things we're doing in talent is meeting with businesses to understand why they need, why we they need to, what they need to do to keep their business here and support those needs as best as we can. We need to have a workforce pool when it comes to attracting new businesses and then meet the needs of the individuals of those we want working in the community. We look at how we can help, how we can keep people from leaving the area so their earnings stay here and we collaborate with our workforce partners like Michigan Works, um, Staying Decision Systems and Manpower. So some of the things that we have to handle, um, we do, we help businesses promote jobs through job of the week, um, which is something that is done through our social media. We have training programs like the electrical line tech program that we partner with NMU out at Sawyer, where we work with industry partners. We work with the career technical education we do a quarterly talent newsletter to talk about what is happening in talent and new incentives taking place. And then we have Workforce Insight, which I'll go over in a couple of slides. So other basics in economic development. Incentives. You may hear a lot about incentives, which has been a battle in the media for years. You um, may have heard them called corporate welfare, but if they're done correctly, they can really benefit a community by bringing a project to the area. They don't make a bad deal good, they make a good deal better. Some incentives that we've worked with local locally on um, are tax abatements, loan guarantees, deal closing funds, which those are more popular in the South, um, particularly in, most, mostly in Texas, where if a company is looking at another state, they'll come in with a check. And if the business signs on the dotted line, then they'll go to Texas. Um, this is something that Michigan kind of did away with when we went to their flat business tax rate. Uh, we help with different types of grants, training dollars and technical assistance. Um, the last three were huge during the pandemic. So services. Um, with all of this information, how does the LSCP fit into all of this? Um, it's through our services. We have services to help a business from startup all the way to succession planning. Staff has the resources and tools to help businesses with um, business plan creation, talent enhancement, site location, data and research, grant writing, strategic planning, and financing through our county's EDC. 
if you go onto our website, marquette.org, you will see the full list of services that we provide. Um, oh, I just lost my spot. <laughs> but yeah, if you go to our website, you'll see the full, the full list um, there on the website. And then in our marketing resource guide, it will have all the information. So Lightcast, um, this is an internal tool that we have. We use this tool to do our county data booklet every year. It can give projections on industry, population, really you name it, and this tool can pull it. Um, it most likely can pull the data you need, um, but we also use this tool a lot for wage studies for businesses, and that's been really popular with the talent shortage. Uh, Workforce Insight. This is part of Lightcast, um, but this is this part of the tool can help businesses attract alumni back to the area, or help a business see where they should be doing their talent fairs. So the tool pulls from over a hundred million social profiles, like Indeed, LinkedIn, Monster, so that you can see all the way down to resume level data um, for your talent needs. It's pretty cool. In plan, we've had this for a couple of years, but this tool allows us to do economic impact studies for businesses or events. Um, we did do one for the UP 200 so that they could show their donors how much of an impact the event was having on the community. Um, these reports break it down so you can see the benefits to the local tax base, <clears throat> the state, and then how it affects the businesses in the area. There's a small fee associated with doing these reports, um, but it can be as in-depth as you'd like. It could be three pages or it can be 11 pages. We don't just do them on events. We can do them on businesses. So if a business is looking to do an expansion on their building, we can show how that will impact the community as well. So it's all about relationships. Um, in the end, that's what it's all about. The way that we do business by working with our board and building relationships with legislators and other EDOs around the state, it helps us with challenges that we may not have an answer to. So we've been very blessed to have the investors in the network that we do in economic development. And I know that was a lot of information, but um, I'd encourage you to share this information or if you know a business or someone who is struggling to start a business to please send them our way. That's what we're here for. And I'll check to see if we have any questions that came through. Right, I don't see any that came through, but if anything does come up after watching this um, or listening, feel free to shoot us an email and I'll be happy to get to those. And I hope that everyone has a great rest of the afternoon.